Slayer. <clears throat> Halo is a good game. I know we're all pumped up for the Halo release, right? It's been six years since the last release, and I'm about 14 years since its peak. But finally, after all the letdowns of the past year and a half of gaming, on top of the virus that must not be named, all the people clinging to the last bit of hope can be relieved knowing that this isn't going to be a total bust, right? Right? While we've all been patiently awaiting the next release of Modernized Nostalgia, I've been playing all the Halos attached to the Master Chief Collection over on my stream, which you should go check out. Uh, link is in the description down below. <laughs> It really is refreshing going back and playing old games that you loved so much as a kid and having those feelings pop up in the middle of a scene or a battle. It's like having Jello, or even if you like Jello or eat Jello. You have it and it's so good, and then you just never have it again. Until someone either brings it to a picnic or to work and you just devour it in front of those bright kids of Aunt Susan. Those kids just keep asking if you got any games on your phone. You don't even know if you're related to them or how Aunt Susan is even related to you. You don't remember even if you said two words to the lady in your entire lifetime. But you don't care. You got Jello, and that's the only thing that matters. So, for your viewing pleasure, I will be discussing my favorite aspects of the series and how each of them impacted the gaming industry and the community. Me specifically, I have to figure out if I can get the words from my brain to my mouth without sounding like I'm having an absolute breakdown. The one thing that I think we glance over the most is the beauty of visual level design. Like the line art style for Telltale Games and Borderlands, or the simplistic style of Fortnite, Halo has always relied on their familiar yet foreign color scheme. Throughout the years, games have either kept up with the times or had their graphics be ready for next-gen platform they're providing for, or they went the other route and established good design with less graphical input. What does this mean for Halo? Well, nothing if 2020 absolutely destroyed you and you failed to find the beauty in anything anymore. Otherwise, the first Halo that came out in 2001 was built specifically to show off the brand spanking new Xbox console. But that means that they chose their path with pushing their graphical limitations and having high visual expectations for all their games. If you ask me, they nailed it. Every single game has its own beauty to it, even if it's not immediately noticeable. Such simple colors, blue and purple, used again and again to show its alien-like features. The contrast between light and dark. We're talking original here, not that Halo anniversary bullshit are balanced to create another gameplay mechanic and bring out more of the contrast between the colors. And my favorite, the fucking structures. Every time I play this game, I fail to notice all the structures scattered across the land, even the ones I'm fighting on that just tower over hills and rivers. But when I go back and look at them while editing, I'm just in awe. Its massive expansion really keeps things in perspective while playing. You don't feel super powerful or that it's too easy. You feel small. You feel like you don't belong. The structures are filled with complex design in mind to keep things either tight and fluid or vast in obstruction when needed. Every poor, every poor car. <laughs> every core part of the game starts with the world design as a solid foundation. Everything else is just an additive to make the game better. Bungie and 343 knew exactly what to do with the structures to complement the AI. Q segue. If you play games back in the late 90s or early 2000s, you kind of can figure out that computer AI was pretty trash back then. Like in Mario, the patterns they are on are just predetermined paths on repeat. In Minecraft, when mobs get hostile and chase you in almost a straight line with minimal variation, that's the basis of basic mob AI. So back in 2001 when you played Halo Combat Evolved for the first time and you went against a squad made up of one elite, two jackals, and three grunts, you actually had a really difficult time trying to figure out how to beat them. At first you didn't know that killing the elite would make the grunts flee. You didn't know that you could break the shields of jackals with the charge of plasma pistol. You were just running and gunning with the pistol hoping the ungodly range of it was enough to take them all out from a distance. You could throw a plasma grenade on a grunt and it would end up taking out other enemies in the process. But you didn't know that, because this is the first time you're going against this type of AI. The games progressively got better with each release, but to me, Combat Evolved takes the cake. They took a brand new idea, stuffed it into the shooter, and prayed to the prophets that it hit. I think me making a video about this 20 years after its release is a testament to its groundbreakingness. The preceding games only added to the AI, never really changing much from the first game, but adding things like jihadi grunts, energy sword frustrated elites, and battering iron brutes. Hunters fucking suck. I don't know how to beat them. I'm not gonna even try to learn how to beat them. I'm just gonna play ignorance. The better the consoles got, 
the more variations the AI had to react to the player's movement and playstyle. I loved playing against the AI in Halo 2 and 3. Just something about triggered events molding into chaos always made me so happy. The way the allies would be jihadi marines throwing themselves in front of the enemy made for the strangest battles, but honestly, the funnest of times. Watching a marine die to another marine's poorly placed grenade and saying some witty line about their injury is just, it's just solid gameplay. The other side of this though is with Halos 1 through 3 with the flood. The flood is a complete turnaround from any other enemy in the game. They put their heads down and run right at you, no questions asked. They can even carry guns, and when they shoot they stop for a second and just keep fucking running at you. You shot one of their arms off? Well good, now you just pissed them off and now they're all coming after you. Way to go. You would have these battles where you, the Flood, and a Covenant squad will all be in the same room fighting each other, and it would just be absolute chaos with body parts and grenades flying around, but usually always with the Flood winning. The Flood thrive off of getting up close and personal with you and creating AoE damage, making guns useless, which is completely different than all the other ones. Speaking of guns, I'm a little conflicted on how I feel about the variations between each game. On the plus side, creating the guns created variation between the gunplay instead of changing the gameplay itself. You were able to keep the same guns throughout the series, but with different mechanics. On the other side, coming into Halo 2 after the Halo Combat Evolved pistol was a fucking letdown. It went from being an S tier rapid fire sniper to a nerf gun. On the other side, the change in the plasma pistol from Halo 3 to Reach went from a Nickelodeon slime super soaker to the Hulk pissing with Morningwood. Keeping up with their changes between creating variations between each game, they did okay. It, w it wasn't great, it wasn't revolutionary, but they did okay. If the games were as customizable like some games today, they would be worse off. In multiplayer, I loved dying to someone with a battle rifle because I knew he beat me with pure skill, not just an OP weapon like it is in... <clears throat> oh, we're done. Now, I can't make a Halo review without talking about the music. We all know it. Even people who have never played the series before know the tune. I don't have much to say other than letting it speak for itself. Just listen. Like, I'm literally hard right now. The music was made to complement the environment in such a way that it was just as important as the feelings the player was experiencing when they see something on screen. You see this foreign field with tall structures and strange trees, and there's a mood for that. You're in an intense battle and you need to keep the adrenaline high. There's a track for that. You put the controller down to go to the bathroom in between fighting areas, and there's just silence. Just the sound of the ambience of the world. The delivery is absolutely key with this duo of soundtrack and gameplay, and man, I... It's just so good. I get emotional listening to it now. All the tracks are just... Ah, oh, man. The music really resonates with me, and I get very emotional whenever I listen to it. That is how you imprint feelings into music. So now, time for the rankings. Here's my interpretation of each game. Halo Combat Evolved. First one. Based. Janky but loved. Halo 2, short, but a chat in a multiplayer bedroom. Halo 3, La Musica. I'm not crying, you're crying. Halo 4, is this a video game or is it a movie? Halo ODST, sexism, cringe? Good comedy. And Halo Reach, great visuals, copied by Star Wars? Pog. And now, here's a list of the best games in order based off of three things. Visuals, the music, and the gameplay. I chose these based solely off the footprint each of these left on me. 
I don't think I can say I am the same person after playing these games. Bringing back this kind of nostalgia is the reason why humans have feelings. It's moments like this that we remember where we grew up, how we became us, and where it all began. To the people who made the games, I couldn't thank you enough, and I know I'm not the only one, especially if you made it this far in the video. I want to thank everyone who came over to Twitch and watched me stream this, and also want to thank everyone for getting through this video. I hope the people that shared an emotional attachment with this game can relate to the video a little more.